Jæja, krakkar. Eru þið ekki hress? Uh, ég er hress, vona þið þið líka, og ég heita Ása og þetta er rásin mín lærum íslensku og let's learn Icelandic. Today we're going to get a little bit on with the cases, the cases, the cases. This is the, may, this is the pain of learning Icelandic, but we can do it little by little. And today I'm going to focus a little bit on, in a very general way, very, very general and superficial way, to start to address how the verbs affect the cases of the nouns and adjectives. Okay. So before you watch this lesson, make sure to watch the ones that pop up here. Uh, the links are in the description. In particular, watch the introductions to the cases and also uh, the one where I did the I and you in all the cases. Okay, this is just to get you started. Like I mentioned in one of my lessons before, there are leftovers of cases in English. Very, very small crumbles, very, very small crumbles almost invisible but they're there okay so let us tell a little story about a girl or a woman the girl is here here is she here is she okay but then if we use other verbs apart from the verb to be then she changes into her okay so then we will see uh, if for example we love the girl then we say I love the girl, I love her, I love her. So now what has happened is that the verb has sort of changed it from she to her, she to her. And we can move on, and this is almost all the words. For example, if we marry her, I see her, I marry her. And then maybe she goes away on a business trip or die, depend, dies, depending on how dramatic you want the story to be. And then you say something like, I miss her. I miss her. So when there is a verb acting directly on the girl, we are loving her, we are marrying her, we are missing her. Then it's not a she, but it turns into her. So the same thing happens in Icelandic, but then we have four different versions. Okay. So it, the, our wonderful little story will be uh, Here er hún, here er hún, okay. Ég elska hana, ég elska hana. Ég giftist henni, ég giftist henni. And finally, ég sakna hennar. So now our little story has four different versions of she. So these are all the Icelandic cases. She in all the Icelandic cases. Hún um hana frá henni til hennar. Hér er hún um hana frá henni til hennar. Uh, Nefnifall, þolfall, þáufall og eignafall. Okay, these are all the cases, and this is what happens when uh, some verb is acting on the girl or whatever. Okay, we can think about it in a sort of a visual and very unprofessional way. We can think about it a little bit like this. Let's say that I'm the main person in, in the story. It's told from my perspective. I'm the one that loves the girl and marries her and whatever. So yeah, I can think a little bit about uh, it like I am me, and I'm holding a hammer. And the hammer is the verb. And the hammer can be, I love her, I miss her, I marry her. And I apply this hammer on the girl. So I'm applying the uh, verb directly on the girl. And this is sort of pff, making the girl change into a different case. So it's bending the word, it's moving it onto the case. So I'm holding the hammer and I love her. I marry her, I miss her, I can kill her, I can... Uh, feed her, I can give her something, etc, etc. And whenever I apply my hammer of the work, my invisible, invisible hammer, on something, then I, poof, it starts out in the nebnefat and then it poof, gets uh, inflated into a different case. It's a little bit like this. So this is the simplest, simplest, simplest way of thinking about it, I think. It's just that the verb is acting on the noun or the, the pronoun or the adjectives or whatever. And because the verb is acting on it, directly on it, then uh, the cases will change. 
So now comes the complicated thing. First of, first of all, the complicated thing is knowing how each word is in each case. Okay, this is something that I'm not going to touch about in this lesson. This is a problem on its own. The second issue is to knowing which case to use. Because you have a hammer, but you don't know if it will bend the word in this direction or in that direction. So this is uh, a little bit complicated because in the English version, I love her, I marry her, I miss her, and it's all the same. It's all her, her, her. But in the Icelandic version, is here at home, I elska hana, I giftist henni, og I sakna hennar. So it's all four different cases. And what cases uh, the word uh, moves the word into or bends the word into depends on the verb and on the context and the meaning. So this is not always completely trivial, but it's not as complicated as it sounds. I think, I hope, this part of the problem at least. First of all, the nefnifall, the nefnifall, it's basically only two verbs that I can remember that don't bend the words. So basically two hammers that, that don't affect the words. And this is the verb to be. So if you have the word, verb to be, it's not a hammer. It's just nothing. You're not affecting the word. You're just stating that this is the situation. You're not affecting the situation in any way. The situation is not affecting anything. It's just a state of being. And when you have the verb to be, in most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, the word will remain in the nominative. The same goes uh, for uh, the word to be called and to have the name, because this is also sort of a state of being. Jeg hate the Ausa. Ausa is in the nominative, because it's, uh, to be called is not it's not changing me, it's not affecting me, it's just a state of being. At the other end of our story, uh, uh, there are very few verbs that will bring with them the ignorfat. Very, very few verbs. At the moment, I'm sure there are probably more, but at the moment I can only remember sakna. Okay, to miss somebody. I can only remember sakna and I have no idea why it brings with it the egnafall, but it always does. So the verbs to, to miss will bring it the egnafall, but I think it's very few verbs. Maybe it's only this one and a couple of more. It's almost never. It's almost never that when you have a verb, it will bring with it the egnafall or the genitive. Okay, so almost all the verbs, almost all the verbs will either bring with them the tholfall or the tholfall. Okay, so already the problem got a lot simpler, like insanely much simpler. Now we only have to worry about two cases and not four, and that's so, 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 so much easier. And what makes it even easier is that there are many nouns, many, many nouns that are identical in the tholfall and the tholfall, or almost identical. So even if you don't know which uh, version to use, they will sound almost the same and nobody will be the Pfizer. And nobody will re really realize that you were using the wrong case or that you were just guessing you didn't know which one it was. Okay. Okay. So already our problem is not so bad. It's not so bad. I... Honestly, it's not so bad, but if we want to do things well and do things accurately, is there a simple way to know at any time which verb will bring uh, which case? No, there is not. There is no rule that applies to everything without any exceptions and so on. But there is a very general, let's call it suggestion of thumb. Something like suggestion of thumb. Okay, and I will uh, tell this to you just so you get the feeling for, for how things work. But know that this is, does not apply always. There are a lot of exceptions and so on. But let's just look at this as a start. First of all, some verbs always take with them the same case. Like, or almost almost always. Like, for example, sakna, you will always have the eknafatl. And then there are different words, verbs that will always bring with it the tholfatl or always bring with it the thawfatl. There are, however, verbs that can either go to the thawfatl or to the thawfatl. And I think it's useful to uh, explain these a little bit because it also uh, explains a little bit about the idea, the differences between the thawfatl and the thawfatl. One of these verbs is the verb uh, to teach. Okay, to teach. 
let's say I'm teaching a girl Icelandic. Okay, I have a girl and I'm teaching her Icelandic. I can both say both are completely correct sentences. I can both say, Yeah, can ne hana? Yeah, can ne hana? But I can also say, Yeah, can ne henni? Yeah, can ne henni? And these are both completely correct sentences, both I teach her in, in English, these we translate to, but in Icelandic they have very different meaning. Okay, so the first sentence, ég kenni hana, ég kenni hana. So when you use the tólfall, most of the time it's you have the hammer and the hammer is directly hammering on whatever word that you're doing. So I'm teaching her, I'm teaching her and then this and in this uh, context, her refers to Icelandic, because Icelandic uh, is a female word, so we would use she about Icelandic. Or ye kenni hana, I'm teaching her, I'm teaching directly Icelandic, I'm teaching her. Okay. However, when you are using thauvfall, more often, again, not a strict rule that applies always, but a general suggestion of thumb is that when you have the thawafat, more often you're doing something with somebody. Okay, like you're marrying them. You're not like marrying them directly, brutally. I mean, you're marrying together in some sense. I mean, it's a little bit like this. So when I say I teach her in the sense, ye kenni henni, this means I'm teaching the girl Icelandic. So Icelandic is the thing that I'm teaching. And this will go into Tholfat, but the thing, the person that I'm doing this with, in some sense, with in a very simplistic sense, this is the girl, I'm teaching with the girl, so I'm the teacher and she's the student, so ye can nehenni. Okay, so direct translation into English would be something like ye can nehana, in English you would say uh, I teach it, meaning the Icelandic, I teach it to the girl. And then, uh, is I teach her, I teach her the girl. Okay. Another very similar example is the verb uh, to give, to give, okay. Uh, give okay, let's say, I give the girl a gift, and like before, stelpa is a female word, but gjöf is also a female word. So we can say two sentences that sound the same from, from a naive point of view, but have different meaning, is that ég gef hana, ég gef hana, and then ég gef henni, ég gef henni, okay. Ég gef hana, this means I give her, she is the thing that is being given, she is the gift. Ég gef hana, ég gef hana. But on the other hand, if we say ég gef henni, ég gef henni, then we say uh, I give her. I give her, meaning I give something to her. She is the one receiving the gift. Okay, so this is, uh, I think this is a nutshell a little bit about why we do the cases a little bit. Because in English, if you say I give her, without any further explanation, it could either mean that she is being given something or if she is the gift. In Icelandic, uh, there are two different meanings, depending on the, the same words, but the different cases, and this gives you the different uh, meaning. Okay, so the general rule is this, when something is done directly to the word, then we use tholfall, but when it's more togetherness, let's say something more togetherness or doing something with somebody, more often than not we do the tholfall. Uh, that being said, there are so many uh, exceptions and there will come a time when you think you're holding the hammer and then you'll start hitting yourself with it. But that's a different story for another day. I hope this helped you more than confused you. But if not, feel free to leave comments and ask and I will try. But don't panic if you don't understand everything right away. Learning cases is a 
process, let's say. So before you will be able to use the cases fluently, you are going to have to use all the tools that are available to you. You're going to have to, you're going to need a lot of input. You're going to need a lot of structured learning, and then you're going to need a lot of practice. But if you make some mistakes along the way, some of them don't matter so much. So don't be discouraged. There are so many foreigners that speak absolutely fantastic Icelandic now, and this can also be you. You, one day this will also be you. I have complete uh, faith in you. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the homework and see you in the next uh, lesson. Bless, bless. You know the drill by now. Press pause, take all the time that you need, and now I will give you the result. Hér er hún, ég elska hana, ég giftist henni og ég sakna hennar. Try to connect to the right translation, press pause, take your time, here is the answer. Now try to fill in with a she in the right uh, case, press pause, take your time and here is the result. Ég sakna hennar, hér er hún, ég giftist henni, ég elska hana. The final exercise of today, do the same, but now with the word you. So now I hope you remember how the cases are of the you. Uh, press pause, try, uh, take all the time that you need, and then now I will give you the correct answer. Ég giftist þér, ég elska þig, ég sakna þín, and finally, hér ert þú. That's all for today. Bless, bless.